participant lines muted. Okay, great. Now we'll begin. Um, as I said, if you've got any questions, please save them till the end. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and I'll send you a link to the recording um, later this afternoon, which will be downloadable from our website. The webinar today is being hosted by Andy Graham, and he's our Wonderware technical consultant. He joined Solutions PT in 2006 and supports a wide range of products, including InTouch Historian, Historian Client, Information Server, and System Platform. So I'll pass you over to Andy. Thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, so we're, as Anna has mentioned, we're going to be covering InTouch Access Anywhere. Um, but before we do, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, the InTouch HMI is obviously our uh, SCADA front end, so your plant. Um, visualization of uh, exactly what's going on on the screen. Um, it's, it's just a, a very brief background. We are in, uh, it's, it's the, the world most sold SCADA package, so we are the market leader. Um, it's in 22% of the world's manufacturing plants, uh, so you can see that the vast, vast number of, of licenses sold. And you can see that there's um, been quite a long evolution of the product. I mean, even from the uh, symbols like the uh, shortcuts give, give evolve as you've gone through the years and it leads us very nicely on to um, our in such access anywhere because there are a lot more trends growing within the marketplace so what we're now seeing is that um, there's users above and beyond the traditional operator that actually wants access to this type of information and um, so and even more so, we've got the, the bring your own device type of um, technology. So nearly everybody owns some form of smart device these days, be it a, a tablet or an, a phone. Um, and web browsers are finding their ways into many more things other than just uh, the smart devices. We've actually got them in um, televisions these days. So you can actually use a, a television to, to display uh, web pages. Um, and HTML5 seems to be the um, technology that has emerged as the, the common adopted specification um, by all major browsers. So the, 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 most of them do support it. There is a website that you can go to to see um, how supported it is. I think uh, Chrome is one of the better ones, uh, along with Firefox and Internet Explorer following closely behind with the latest version they've brought out. Um, so just to look at a few of the challenges now, uh, the, the idea is that we can easily access this information anywhere, anytime, from any device. Um, there are quite a few IT challenges when it comes to implementing something like this, um, or certainly some concerns around it, because they're obviously going to be concerned about the management and maintenance of those types of applications. If it was bespoke, for example, then it would probably take quite a, a lot of IT interaction to make sure the right people have the right access. It's, it's always going to be a key topic, uh, security. So we have to make sure that this new uh, technology is secure, uh, and I will touch on that in a bit more and a bit later on. Um, but IT are also uh, always concerned about managing costs. Uh, cost is always a big factor, so obviously the cheaper it is, the, the better it is for, for everybody involved. Um, so just looking at the benefits, uh, we're looking to, like I was saying, get these non-traditional users being able to look at that plant information through the InSwitch HMI. So it's about displaying that, um, that SCADA information directly on your, your devices. Your, even in a desktop environment, in a corporate view, you can still go to this, this web page and still look at the, the same environment. Um, it also in, increases uh, the productivity and the responsiveness. So if you uh, can hear, for example, an alarm uh, being displayed or being heard on the plant environment, but you're in the office environment, then you can actually quickly access that, that starter to be able to see what, what the problem is and where it lies. So what exactly is InTouch Access Anywhere? We are talking about a HTML5 um, compliant RDP session, in effect. So uh, it works in the same way that it does with similar services. Uh, you install a lightweight piece of software on a similar server, and that's what manages this, this integration to the, the web browser. So when you go to the website, 
it essentially opens a RDP session at the terminal services side and renders everything in a HTML5 uh, view uh, so that you can um, see it on the screen and your mobile devices. Um, and it's about getting that access to the devices anytime, anywhere, from any device. Now, um, it's actually included with into its 2012 R2 services concurrent licensing, so there isn't anything else to buy from a licensing perspective, providing you have that type of license. Um, if we just look at uh, quite a simple architecture, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things in there. So we've got our system platform environment, we've got uh, an InSwitch terminal server, and this is where you typically install the InSwitch Access Anywhere software. Um, what this will then do, it will allow us to look at it on all the mobile devices on our plant floor and even through firewalls to any location. It can be web facing if you wish, so you can actually look, look directly. Um, it is sometimes better to actually install a second terminal server so that it's easy to manage and then it keeps it away from the plant floor environment. Um, the licensing cost is the same, it's still the input. TSE concurrent licenses that you need to purchase for the, for the system, but you can then actually manage and design your application uh, specifically for mobile devices because your plant floor input application might not fit the mobile device exactly as you'd like it to. Now you can scale it, but then you might have small buttons and, buttons and things that aren't very easy to press. Um, so we are looking at um, again, these features are, are, are full access, so we're not talking um, like an information server where you can publish your, your InSwitch windows to the environment. Uh, you um, actually have a full InSwitch application on screen and it's fully um, uh, working, so you can click anywhere you like and it, it works exactly as you expect from a client perspective. Uh, it runs on a browser and the important thing to, to note about that is that it doesn't require anything to be installed at the client end. Uh, that, that's some, often a deal breaker that you, we can't install things on, on these client devices, particularly in corporate environments. Um, mobile devices, things like iPads, uh, iPhones, they're very restrictive in what they can do, but if you're just connecting via a web browser then there's, there's never going to be a problem with that. Um, and it also provides secure access, so it's the same active directory security that you'd get from a terminal services environment. So by logging and using the right user credentials, that then authenticates you and provides the right input application. Um, and it also supports HTTP and HTTPS for the security aspect as well. Um, so just uh, reiterating some of these benefits, so if you, we've got this information at your fingertips, so anywhere from any device, to keep mentioning. Uh, it's increased flexibility because we're getting these non-traditional users access to the this input application. There's going to be IT savings in there because um, there's no uh, implementation of things like client devices to put in there, so you don't have to put in uh, a whole range of desktops. Perhaps you could actually reduce the number of clients on your front floor and have a few of these mobile devices. Um, perhaps, again, if you've got uh, your clients on the front floor separated by quite a large distance, then it's, it'd be very useful to actually have it available from a mobile device as well. Um, you can even do it remotely, like I was saying, so if it's web-facing, you could access it anywhere in the world. Um, and I know that might sound like a scary concept if you're looking at an interest application, but what you can purchase is input TSC concurrent read-only licenses, which are... Um, cost-effective, uh, there's not much difference between those and a WIS client license, so if the only thing you're doing on WIS is actually displaying um, in such windows, then it'd be, a, it'd be a no-brainer to go with something like this in a read-only fashion, so that then you can't actually do any actions on the system, but you can still navigate and look at what's going on on the, on the front floor. Um, and the idea is that we can then get access to this information quickly and act upon it um, quicker to prevent these problems that, that are often occurring to, uh, and these are obviously causing inefficiencies in time and money and resources. So just a few of the requirements, if we look at server side, we're obviously looking at Windows Server OS uh, with terminal services, we need the latest version of InSwitch uh, and TSC concurrent licenses. And like I said, they can be uh, read-write licenses or read-only licenses, um, depending on what you want to display on the screen. Uh, or how you want to be able to, to 
to uh, operate it. And it, any HTML5 from a client and compatible browser, uh, and that's included in all these below, but it's not limited to these. As more come out, they're, they're more than likely going to support the HTML5 technology, so um, then it's not going to be limited just to these. Um, if we just have a quick look uh, at security, because it, it is a hot topic and um, there's always concerns raised against it, and I've already mentioned that using a terminal services environment uses exactly the same Active Directory um, system as uh, uh, or security as uh, you'd expect in this infrastructure anyway. So um, you provide it with your user credentials, so your username and password and the communications between server and client take place over web sockets and that could be either the HTTP or the secure HTTP. Um, and by default it uses port 8080 but again this can be configured in um, the server to, to use any port. Uh, the important thing to note is at the bottom there so no data is actually transferred so we're not transferring data over the system to our client device and having that exposed on that client device. Only mouse clicks, keystrokes and gestures are from the remote user to the RDP host and then it's just graphics from the RDP host to the client end. We can also do this through a DMZ as well and we can introduce in a secure gateway and the security aspect is, is almost the same. There's just a, a basically you point it still at the instance access anywhere at the very left hand side that you can see on there um, uh, but it, and what all it will do is redirect through that secure gateway. Um, and the, the beauty of it is, again, this does make it more secure because when using that secure gateway, the connection between Intel Access Anywhere browser client and the secure gateway is always secure through that, that um, gateway as well. Um, okay, so just moving on to a demo, and um, the software actually hasn't been released just yet, so we don't have a fully working uh, version of it, uh, but I have a demo which shows exactly um, how it works uh, and what it does. So as you can see, we've got a, an iPad on here. Uh, we go to a web browser. We've obviously gone to an IP address. And all we're doing here is entering a username and password and we'll see how to log into the system. And when we log in, it then prompts us and we can um, customize that web browser front end. And then what we see when it loads up is the um, instance application. And as you can see from uh, the way that it's navigating, you can uh, like uh, zoom in and out of, the, of it and um, so you can make it smaller and bigger so even if you do have um, uh, quite a, a lot of information on one screen you can still zoom in and actually get right into that and as you can see they're actually performing action so you can annoy alarms through here you can change the actual uh, tank itself so uh, changing valves um, a little bit later on it will show us um, historian client trends embedded within the instance application so you can even look at your historian trend data as well um, it's a it's a fully working application um, as, I've, uh, as I've been mentioning and if um, if you look at um, other people in the, the marketplace that are, are doing this they, they don't do it to this sort of level so there are HTML5 um, workings out there but they um, tend to require some other additional software to work on top of it or it's limited uh, so you don't get this fully fledged uh, application uh, that we do in this environment. Um, I'm going to stop the demo there, but you can get the general idea. Um, we can literally navigate through any, and that there's the Australian client trend that I was referring to. So you can um, drag the text on there and view that data um, as you wish. So if I just go back to my presentation. So uh, with regards to licensing, it's installed by a, a separate CD. It's licensed for use only with InTouch, so it's the InTouch TC concurrent licenses that I, that I was talking about. Um, it's, it's no additional charge, like I was saying. Uh, the only thing that you need to consider is how you're going to actually manage it, so whether you have developed a different application for your mobile device, um, but that's all engineering that is around. And if you install another terminal server, there's obviously a, a cost involved in, in providing that hardware. Um, so just to summarise, it's, it's about mobility and um, security, so making sure that we've got the right, even though we're making these applications mobile, um, we're not um, 
uh, causing problems with the actual security methods that we're actually logging into the system with. Um, there's no additional client software. That's a, a very important point to uh, to note. It is using this HTML5 web browser, and it's uh, it's a simple and robust access environment. Um, just looking at the next few webinars in the series, uh, we you can register today for a, a live one of Smart Grants, which is going to be on the 14th of August. So that's about getting your plant performance reports to your mobile device. Um, there are a couple of recorded webinars as well that we've done just recently. So we've got Dream Report. You can go and download that and have a look at, at what Dream Report has to offer. And the same for um, Information Service 2012 R2. Uh, they're both av available from those, those websites that you can see there. So I think now if uh, we just open up the line and participant lines are muted. If there's anyone that's got any questions, I'd be uh, happy to, to assist. Any questions from the at all? It's it's probably also worth noting that this doesn't distract from using things like um, ACP, uh, we still very much recommend ACP to manager as the management software on top of a terminal services environment um, to be able to manage it exactly as you wish. And it's not, I'm not going to go into the detail in this, this webinar, but by all means you, uh, you are happy to contact us to discuss, discuss, discuss things like that further because I can understand the pain that people face with configuring terminal services and ACP is just a tool to help with that. But if there's, there's no other questions, I uh, think we'll... Yeah, okay, well thank, thank you very much for attending. Um, as I say, this webinar has been recorded and I'll place it on the website later today and I'll send you all a link, so please share it with anyone who you think might be interested. Well, thank you very much for attending. Thanks a lot.